Canva is really great, but when you don't know all the little bits and pieces that you need to know to make everything work as you really wanted to, then it can get quite frustrating. Um, and I've been using Adobe programs for years and they have all of these different features and cool things that you can do to make text and working with text and paragraphs really, really simple. But Canva, as of the time of recording this, does not have said features. And so we need to do a couple of workarounds. And so this video is all about the top around five or six things that I do as a graphic designer inside Canva to teach my students and work with my clients to make sure that we're getting really crisp designs and doing things that are the most economical way, but also get the best results visually, making sure that our graphics look professional, look really clean, um, and just don't cost us our sanity while we're trying to create them. So let's get into it. So if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie Norton and I am a graphic designer who specializes in teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand of graphics using programs just like Canva. Um, and if you ever want to get in touch with me, please hit over, head over to my Instagram at whitedeergd and we can hang out. I've teached lots more tips over there and you get to know me rather than just these fancy pants tutorials. Um, yeah. I would love to, to see you over there. But in the meantime, let's get into this video. So I'm gonna go through a few different things and, and they're going to be so, so helpful. These are literally things that I use every single day or every single week when I'm designing in Canva and things that you must know while you're creating these graphics. So let's get into it. The first one is all about changing the line spacing. So you probably like, Jackie, you already know how to change the line spacing. If you don't, let me show you. But that's not what I mean. Okay, so first, you've got the, the line spacing between different paragraphs of text. This is really great because you'll see here, if you click on this little spacing button at the top and you've got your paragraph of text selected or your text box, it doesn't have to be a whole paragraph. You can change the, the line spacing. So how wide the space is between the different lines of text. This is really important to make sure you get this right because if you have it too tight, the text might become unreadable or if you have it too uh, loose, the text might become a little bit disconnected and not cohesive. And so it's really important that we have somewhere in the middle here. Um, and so it'll depend on your font. It'll depend on the vibe that you want your graphics to have. Like some people have quite a tight look and that's their brand look. Some people have more of a loose look and so find your balance. So that's where you can do the, the general line spacing. But what you find here is there's actually a lot of space between my two paragraphs of text. That's because I've put a whole return in here. So you can see if I've, I've got zero return here or full return here. There's two ways that I can edit this. Firstly, I can take away my return and just click on this now and kind of go to my line spacing and start to kind of fiddle with things and try to create some more space in between these. Um, but you'll see that it kind of changes things unevenly because I don't have the full text box selected. It's now just trying to change this one paragraph of text, but still kind of getting a little bit messy because now this top paragraph has less spacing than the bottom part of the paragraph. So what I want to do instead is not to do that. Um, sometimes I work, sometimes it doesn't. If you only got one line of text, it might work. But my best tip and the easiest and simplest way to do this is by pressing return. And if this space is too big, literally really just going and changing the font size. So you can go to over here, go this to 16, less or more, and it kind of just changes the spacing here. It's so, so simple. There is, you can also do this by doing the line spacing kind of option with this as well. If you want to go a little bit more um, fiddly and kind of like watch how the spacing moves, but the, you, you have a little bit less um, customization in this because there's only like, you, I can't go any tighter than that, but to be honest, I don't really want to go any tighter than that. So it's a little bit, um, it's a really quick way to do that. So that's a really important tip to remember that changing up your line spacing because sometimes there's too much space between the paragraphs. It feels a bit disconnected. And sometimes we just need more room in our design. So by tightening up that line spacing, we get more room in our overall graphics. All right, let's move on to the next tip for you. I wanna let you know that you can change fonts within the one text box. So say if I highlight the 90 here, and I wanna change the text of that, the font of that to something different. If I do this, it changes the whole text box. It changes every single font within this whole text box to that new font. I'm like, no, I just wanted the 90. I wanna show you a little bit of a workaround to that. Not so much to get the 90 on it as a different font, but to get 90 of as a different font. So if I go to, so you'll see here, if I expand this text box, it's a whole line of text. So what I actually wanna to do to be able to have some customization within the fonts that I'm using within a text box, if I actually click um, press delete, so that this is an important thing, press delete, so there's no space between around and 90, and then press return, so that you then have 90 and around on different lines. Now, when I do the 90, you'll see if I change this to a different font, it just changes that line. When we have returns between our text, it allows us to change the font between the different lines of text, which can be so, so helpful. So this actual design was made by by someone else and not me. And so I wanna show you how you can actually design this whole thing in one text box, um, except for this. I won't be able to do the little effect behind the starts. Apart from that, I can do the whole thing with one text box. So I'm gonna duplicate this design. 
So by going over here and pressing duplicate and then deleting my text, um, like so I'll just keep the top one so I can continue going and I'm going to go just public speaking starts before you open your mouth. Let's just type out that text. Okay, so I've got that text done now. And so now it's time to put in my returns and create that spacing so that I can be a little bit more fiddly with the fonts and the font sizing. Um, so if I'm just gonna go around 90% of public speaking starts before, even if there's already like right now, the U is already on a separate line, but I need to manually put the, the separate line there. U, and you'll see there's this rogue space here. I'm gonna delete that for you open your mouth. All right, let's try something like that. You'll see here, if you look at this quite quite front on, you'll notice it's actually not perfectly um, centered. The text is kind of a little bit askew. That's because there's a couple of what I call rogue spaces sitting around here. So if I press, if I go here, you'll see there's actually a space behind public because there used to be a space between public and speaking before I put it on its next line that I actually need to get rid of. So I'm gonna highlight that and delete it. I'm just gonna check for any others. Highlight that and delete it. None there, one there, none there, one there, one there. And so now that, this text is feeling a lot more centered. It's feeling a little bit skewed because of the um, quotation marks, but other than that, it's really it's really spot on. So now it's time to play with my fonts. So I'm gonna highlight the word public, go to my Gusto font, and then make this ginormous. I've already got something got looking pretty good here. You know, you notice there's a lot of spacing now between public and speaking. I don't want that much space, but I'm gonna fiddle with that once I've finished finalizing the fonts. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna do starts in all caps, um, and then four, all right. Now the thing, the thing with all caps, so say if I go, I'm actually just put starts before, before you open your mouth. The thing with all caps is you can even change that even if it's on its own line. So usually when you've got just a plain text box of all text, so say if I just go to this design, if I press all caps, say on climate here, it makes everything in that whole paragraph all caps. So I wanna take that away. And when I just have on its own line, it means that I can then just highlight this. Um, but if I say if I did before you, before and you would all go to all caps. So just keep that in mind. All right, starts before you open your mouth. Let's go something different. Let's put before you open your mouth and then let's put that in my other font which is going to change all of that to that 40. All right, I'm going to make some of these a bit smaller because if, you, if you're watching my other videos around the hierarchy we want to make sure that some different parts of our text are standing out more than others particularly in a quote graphic because I want public speaking for example to stand out more than um, before, you know, so let's go public speaking. I want to make this one. I might make this a different color, which we can change the colors of different words quite easily. We can also change the colors of individual words without doing this. So I can change the, an individual word here to bold, or I could change it to a red color. And that just stays at the different color, no matter what, if it's in its own line or not, which is really, really helpful. Um, public speaking starts before you open your mouth. I might go make this a bit smaller, create some more hierarchy. All right, now I need to fix up my line spacing. Some of this is a little bit too tight and some of this is a little bit too open. So I'm gonna highlight some of these words and fiddle with them here and then highlight this one and bring it down a little bit. But you'll see that it brought public too close to 90% of. So now I'm gonna to go to 90% of with my cursor and make that wider. So you see that you kind of just can fiddle around with things just like that. And now this is starting to come together really nicely. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I could fill with that more and more, but I think you get the point of the different things you can do to put those different lines of text on different lines in your design. All right, let's now go over to this one here. What I wanna show you here is the spacing between your paragraphs, particularly if you've got dot points. Now this is actually really tricky um, and quite frustrating. So um, you'll see here that say if I wanna put an extra space, like these are just really tight together, but if I use the line spacing, it's gonna space out every single line rather than the spacing between the paragraphs. This is something I hope Canva works on one day. Um, what if I press enter here, then you'll see there's just a new dot point. And I don't want just a new dot point sitting there because if I put a new dot point in, there's no text there, but there is nice, a nice amount of space. What you can just do is press enter again. So I've gone, gone to here, press enter, and then press enter again, and it's gonna delete that second dot point. So, so great. So now I'm gonna use that original hack that I taught you and use my letter spacing my, and my letter, my letter sizing and bring that in so it's got a bit, bit of a nice space. Enter, enter change the letter spacing down. And now there's some nice space between those paragraphs to help them to sit apart from each other, not to feel too busy. Love that. And as I said, you can also bold or change the colors of different words um, 
really, really easily in here. Make sure that if you're doing, if you're choosing a body text font, this is a totally different point, but if you're choosing a body text font, make sure that you actually consider um, a font that bolds and italicizes because lots of fonts don't have that availability. Um, for example, my Terminator font here, I can't just, the, the bold and the italics is, 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 is not available for me. So make sure you're finding a body text font that has that capability because it'll just save you so much time later. All right, the next thing I want to show you is just by bolding and standing out certain words. So a way that I love to do this is just by grabbing a box. This is literally a box. I've just press R on my keyboard. I'll just delete that one. Press R on my keyboard and inserts a square. Make this the right, the same size as piece of text that I want to highlight. Pop it over the top like this, change it to another one of my brand colors. And I can potentially, depending on what your brand is, you can rotate it or you can leave it still. And then just send it to being behind by going to position and backwards, that, that word. Lots of people do this kind of style too, where it's kind of half cut off like this. You can do that style as well. And that's just a really great way of highlighting pieces of text without using bolding, without changing the color, without making it all caps, et cetera, et cetera. All right, that's another thing that I love to do. The final thing I wanna show you is just a really easy way to box up your text, like this version I just showed you here, but a little bit easier. So um, when you go to effects here, you can actually press background. And if I just delete the effect on here right now, when I first press effects, it goes to and does this like kind of ugly, kind of half round, half not book box. But what you can actually do is, is edit this. And so if I go to the roundness here, I can either make it really hard edges, so square edges, or if I click on it again, I can make it fully rounded, which I think if I'm gonna do either of those, I think either of those is actually the best way to go rather than somewhere in the middle. Um, both of these are really on trend right now, having the all rounded or having it got the square edges. And then you can go in and change. I'm gonna put this square edges so it matches the rest of the design. Then you can change the background color to one of your branding colors. Um, and then you can even edit the opacity of it if you want to as well um, by going to transparency and doing this. I like having a full, that's my personal preference, but you can do either. And you've also got the spread option, which makes it a box bigger and makes it the box smaller. This is just such a great way to highlight pieces of text, to bring things out. And it's such a quick way to do that. And I just wanted to make sure you knew that effect existed because once I discovered it, I honestly started using it nearly every single day. So I hope those tips have been really helpful for you. This is a bit of a shorter video than what I normally do, but I, but I know that knowing these little things can be such game changers to your whole Canva process and to how you design it. And so if you're looking for more Canva tips and want to learn how to design quicker in Canva, Canva, design better in Canva and enjoy the process more, then I'd love to have you along. Feel free to hit subscribe. I've got videos coming out weekly. I've also got business and branding interviews um, and guest speakers around everything you need to know for your business as well coming out every Tuesday. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.